everybody, welcome back to Unit 5. We're going to deal with some ionic compounds and how they react in water. And before we talk about how ionic compounds react in water, we need to know a little bit about chemical equations, or sometimes people uh, call them chemical reactions, and how we symbolize them. So the equation is really just a shorthand way of writing the chemical change that we see. Okay, whether it's burning or rusting or whatever, we always um, we always represent that chemical change with a chemical equation and a chemical reaction. Okay, and so the reaction is really the thing that you see. Okay, so the reaction is the thing that you see where, um, let's say, um, you're watching a bonfire. Okay, that's a chemical reaction. That's the thing you see. The chemical equation is what we write down in order to represent that chemical change or that chemical reaction. Okay, and so that process is uh, of the chemical reaction is is where you break bonds and then you rearrange them and you make new bonds. Okay, I always think of Legos whenever I think of chemistry. So you you build you know, the big, huge castle, or for me, it was space Legos. You know, you build the huge spaceship, and then you break it all down, and then you build something completely different. Okay, and that's what you're doing in chemistry, is you break all the bonds, then you can build them back up into something completely different. And so, in a general reaction, you're going to have A with an arrow, and then a B. The reactants are always on this side of the arrow, okay, kind of the butt end of the arrow. You start here and go toward B. So A, these are the reactants. Okay, and then the products are what the arrow always points to. Okay, so in this example, these are the products. And now, the thing that you can read, you, that you uh, that I want to point out here, I don't, I don't think you necessarily need to realize it, but I'm definitely going to point it out, is that um, a chemical reaction can be. It doesn't have to just be one reactant and one product. It can be multiple. Chemical reactions can become really complex. And so in this case, I have two reactants, and I have three products, um, and, that's, and that can happen. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about this arrow, because that arrow, believe it or not, this arrow right here, can I point to an arrow with an arrow and not be confusing? Um, I don't know. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna get rid of all that. And then... I'm going to change colors, and I'm going to go like this. So this arrow here, that's the, that's, that, react, that implies that this reaction only happens in one direction, that A plus B will form C plus D plus E, and that's it. Um, let's think of uh, a fire. The wood and the gasoline react in one direction, to form the soot and the carbon dioxide and the smoke that all get released here. Okay, in no places would this reaction have the soot and the ashes and the carbon dioxide, smoke, whatever it is, would that ever react back to fo to form the wood and the ga gasoline? It's just not the way it works. But there are some reactions that happen that do react in both directions. Okay, so let's see if I can get this going here. Actually, so there are some reactions that do happen in both directions. And when and when those reactions do happen in both directions, we put a double-headed arrow or a double-sided arrow there that indicates that not only can these two react to form this, 
But when this is back, they can come this way, and then they can find a happy medium where these guys will react, and then these guys will react, and then they'll find some place in between where they can react and be like, hey, let's have a little bit of A, a little bit of C, and then a little bit of B, and a little bit of F here, and we'll just kind of find a happy spot right in the middle. Okay? And so those reactions are particularly special. Our body is filled with those reactions where um, where they can react in both directions, um, namely cell, cellular chemistry, uh, microbio, where, where the reactions can go forward maybe to, um, to open up a pathway, but then it has to go backwards to close the pathway. So there's all sorts of neat things that happen in chemistry here that, um, that are biologically relevant. That may be a little too much in depth, but the point is, is that we symbolize a reaction that is reversible with two double headed arrows. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes you'll see an arrow like this with a double headed on each on the same line. Um, but the point is, is that regardless of how you see the double headed arrow, just know that that reaction can happen in both directions. So that is how we write chemical equations and that's what a chemical equation represents chemical reactions so have a great day